that's only occurred, those contractions have only occurred since 1913 when the Fed was set up only four times. And each one of those four occasions for money contraction was followed by a recession. Or, or in one, one of the four cases was actually 1929 to 1933. We had a Great Depression. that the Fed is going to cut the federal funds rate. Uh, and it looks like this September meeting. Uh, now, if you look at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, it's, it's, a, it's about 50-50. About half the people participating in that market think there's going to be a 25 basis point cut in the federal funds rate. And the other half thinks it'll be 50 basis points. So... So that's kind of baked in the cake. That's that's been that's been in the market even before the Jackson Hole speech of Powell, and 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 it really came into the market big time when they had the huge uh, revision in the employment in the United States. It turns out, you know, there were about eight hundred thousand jobs were were, were were just not there. I mean, they revised the the the, the job count way down 20 27 percent reduction in that job count the money the money supply has been contracting in the united states it's the stock of money in the united states measured by m2 is lower now than it was in july of 2022 and and as i've indicated david before that's only occurred those contractions have only occurred since 1913, when the Fed was set up only four times, and each one of those four occasions for money contraction was followed by a recession. Or, or in one, one of the four cases was actually 1929 to 1933. We had a Great Depression. We didn't have a recession. We had a Great Depression. So John Greenwood and I have consistently said with these monetary contractions, and, and, and monetarism and the quantity theory of money. And as a monetarist, my, our conclusion is that things are going to slow down. We're going to be in, a, in recession territory late this year, early next year. So, so the, the, the jobs reduction didn't surprise me at all. It just confirmed what I've been basically saying. There'll, there'll be all kinds of, you know, the, the spin doctors will be in full gear uh, doing their thing. And, and by the way, coming back to Powell and, and Jackson Hole, his, his speech was interesting in the sense that he, he claims, and he's getting by with this in the press, by the way, that inflation was caused by distortions that were associated with the pandemic. That's what he said. Now, now what that means is, remember the old supply chain glitches that supposedly caused inflation. No, it's all about the money supply. He, he didn't say anything about changes in the money supply, which he's responsible for. And what happened? In February, we, we had February of 2020, pandemic hit. February of 2021, the money supply, M2, was growing at an annual rate of 27%. That's a record. And, and no wonder that was followed by inflation. If the money supply gets goosed like that, you always have inflation following up with a lag. And that's exactly what we have. He, he, he was full of propaganda, a absolute baloney of the highest order, putting, putting his finger on the cause of inflation as being distortions that were associated with the pandemic. So no, so no, no wonder the Fed could. The Fed never predicted what was going to happen with inflation. John Greenwood and I predicted what was happening with inflation. We said it would go up to as high as nine percent. It went up to nine point one percent. So, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. At the end of this year, Greenwood and I have it at two point five to three percent. That's the CPI headline number. And, and right now it's at 2.9%. So it's, it's very, very clearly we're going to hit the ball out of the park again by paying attention to, to what? <laughs>
the, the, the economy's fuel, the money. And, and we're running on fumes now. The, the money supply has been contracting. And now, even on a year-over-year basis, it's, it's only growing, you know, a little over 1%. First of all, uh, we, we don't know the form. Her, her, her statements are kind of fu- fuzzy, if I can use that term. So we don't know exactly the form that the twenty-five grand is going to come in, but let's just call it. It's going to be a gift, <laughs> and 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 where and where and where's the where's the money for the gift going to come from? It's going to come from uh, people like uh, the the pay taxes in the United States. It, it it's it's a little like I would call it theft, because. Who, who buying a home has the right to receive $25,000 $25, credit, check, cash, whatever form it comes in, from, from somebody, a taxpayer who hasn't even agreed to the thing? They say, you know, I have, I have the right to have $25,000, and, and, and oh, by the way, could you open your wallet and give me twenty five grand? Well, <laughs> that, that's that's usually called theft. Well, it it would change. Let's let's not call it inflationary. It would change the relative prices of things. Oh yes, and yes. and give, given assuming everything else is constant, as they used to always like to use the Latin phrase "ceteris paribus" in economics. Ceteris paribus. What what happens? You give somebody extra cash to buy more real estate. And the demand for real estate goes up, and and prices are going up, not down. So then she comes in with the other hand and says, "Well, I'm going to control this. I'm going to I'm going to have laws that, that control the price increases somehow." Uh, I, I I was reminded so, somebody just dug out. One of my former colleagues was doing a, a historical check in the Baltimore Sun and came across. The first op-ed I ever wrote in the Baltimore Sun was an, was an article in which I laid out the stupidity of rent controls. Where we've had rent controls, you, 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 you have all kinds of nefarious activities associated with trying to get around the rent controls. And, 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 and ironically, you usually end up with a housing shortage. This is this is one of these things in economics of wa- waving a magic wand and, and coming up with a story and scenario. This is this is baloney of the highest order. It, it, this this is very misguided, by the way. And even 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 the liberal press, the New York Times, for example, and Washington Post, they're they're uh, de- democratically <laughs> controlled, shall we say, or heavily influenced both of those papers slam this as being nonsense which which it's it's just blatant nonsense e- even even the press that's supporting her had to come down pretty heavy against this as kind of a harebrained idea the, 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 we, we we have a backlog of inventory and housing in the united states this is what the one reason by the way i've been for years i've been bullish on home home builders stocks and equities and home builders because of this backlog of uh, of housing that has to be built theoretically now the problem is that you have a tremendous uh, uh, amount of resistance or sand in the gears because you have all kinds of local regulations and zoning or mandates and so forth that slow and constrain the supply. They, they, they squeeze the supply. Think of it as a supply and demand curve. They're, they're shifting the supply curve to the left all the time. But that's local. Most of it, 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 most of it is not federal. Most, most of these things are, are local. For example, in, in Maryland, if it, one of our border states, as you know, is Delaware. So if you go on the eastern shore of Maryland and you're, you're, you're driving across Maryland, you don't see very many new homes being built because the, the cost of the, all the regulations and, and government mandates are very high in Maryland. You cross the border into Delaware where the 
regulations are a lot lighter, and you find all kinds of new houses being built. This is this is a classic Trudeau move of shooting himself in the foot, if not the head. He he he's a he's a big greenie. He he wants to go to a green transition. He's made all kinds of promises, and 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 as as part of that, of course, uh, EVs, electric cars, and and then the place where you can uh, that's producing a, a lot of high quality, inexpensive electric cars is what? China. And now he's going to, he's basically going to double the price of, of those Chinese cars that, that, that are supposed to be in the interest of going green. So, so the policy is completely contradictory, but that that's with Trudeau, that's nothing new. Uh, and, and, and with many politicians, by the way, it's nothing new. So that's one thing. The retaliation, uh, we 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 can we can see it. Uh, what what they're doing uh, right right now. We have the the big headline in today's Financial Times, uh, and and today we're we're speaking of what uh, August twenty eighth. We're we're talking with each other. Chinese export curbs on key minerals threaten Western chip makers' output. Germanium and gallium prices double overnight because they've re- they've put a squeeze on on these things. Uh, early uh, last week, they 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 put restrictions on antimony. So the Chinese have an ace up their sleeve, and the ace up their sleeve are are. Uh, Minerals, rare, rare earths in particular, but critic, lots of critical materials. Most people don't realize that the Chinese dominate in the fields of mining, metallurgy, and material science. If you look at the university rankings, for example, in mining, metallurgy, and material science, uh, they, they rank very highly and are dominant by, in the China. The Chinese come in a, a, at the top of the heap. If you look at those areas in the educational system, the the other departments, the other areas in China don't even show up in the top 500. In those three M's, what I call the three M's, mining, metallurgy, and material science, they dominate the top 10, not the top 500, the top 10. So in, in 1992, the Chinese actually uh, in a bulletin said that they were going to use rare earths and critical materials to counterattack the West suppressing China. So, so this, that's the answer to your question with, with some precision. I, I don't, there's no question about it. This, this, is, this is all protectionism uh, and protectionism Will, will either lead to a, hor- a horrible end or, or a horror without end, one of the two. A- again, you've got to look a- again at m- the money supply and, and apply the quantity theory of money and monetarism because that, that's the fuel that makes the economy go. Changes in the money supply will, with a lag, affect nominal GDP, and nominal GDP has two components, inflation plus real growth. So what's been going on in China, if, if you look at the Hanke's golden growth rate for the money supply, M2 in China, it should be around 11% to allow them to hit their inflation target in China of 3% per year. That's Their, their inflation target's 3%. If they want to hit that, they should be growing the money supply at about 11%. Right now, it's growing at six and a quarter percent, and and it's decelerating fairly fast, actually. If you look at the six-month annualized growth rate, it's about 3.9%. And if you look at the three-month, uh, the three month, it's, it's down to 3%. So it's 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 it's... Year over year, it's about half of what it should be. And if you look at a shorter duration at, at kind of the margin, it's slowing down pretty fast. And, and one reason for that, of course, is the banks aren't 
extending much credit in China. And, and that's part of that is the fallout from this property crisis that's, that, that China has been in. If, if you look at China and, and look at it, put it into context, what's, what's going on behind this monetary thing that I just said, from 2010 to 2020, only 10 years, China built 9.6 billion square meters of housing space. That's 9,600 million square meters. The total office space in London is 25 million square meters. So the, 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 the growth in those 10 years, 2010 to 2020, of square meters of residential housing is 385 times more than the total square footage of office space in London. So what, what was going on? Well, what, what was going on? There was, yeah, there was some speculation going on, but the whole idea was moving people out of rural areas and agriculture into urban areas. And if you, to do that, you need houses, you need apartments, you need space. So that, that is not going to continue. And, and, and this has big implications because if you're not building houses and, and uh, apartments at that rate, of course, a, a huge commodity demand for commodities that occurred in, in you know, that 2010, 2020 period, that's, that's not going to happen. And, that, and that's what's going on. I mean, you, the, the banks aren't loaning money into real estate anymore. So as a result, the money supply comes down. So, so that's the, 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 the nub of the problem. It, it is the housing dynamic, but, but the bottom line always comes back to what's going on with the money supply. And the money supply is slowing way down, is way below the level that would be consistent with hitting a 3% inflation. So this, this again comes back into a larger thing that we talk about. And, and, and the propaganda that's in the press, the propaganda that's in the press is that inflation is a global phenomenon. No, it's local. It depends on what the local central bank's doing. And as you can see, if the local central bank's slowing the money supply down and it's growing at a, at a rate that's much lower than the inflation target, you will have an inflation rate that's way lower than the inflation target. So the inflation target's 3% in China, and, and the inflation rate's about a half a percent.